Welcome, everyone. Bienvenidos. Bienvenue. Welcome in. Bienvenuto. Thank you for joining us today. This is Together From Home, Library Strong, the first of two free global and formative events presented by Reforma, the National Library Association to promote library and information services to Latinos and the Spanish speaking. These events feature talks and interactive conversations about priority areas brought up by the pandemic. These events seek to help libraries and librarians serve communities deeply impacted by and during COVID-19. It's aftershocks and beyond. My name is Loida Garcia Fibo. I am an international library consultant and the moderator of these two events. Today, we are delighted that our guest speakers and the moderators of our interactive conversations are coming from different regions of the world. Thank you so much for joining us today. Our guest speakers are Pierre André Ruprecht, Director Ejecutivo Espi Lecturas, Organización Social de Cultura in Brazil, Shonda Hines, Assistant Director for Communications at the Public Policy and Advocacy Office at the American Library Association in the USA, Mr. Gene Tan, Assistant Chief Executive Partnership and Strategy Group at the National Library Board in Singapore. The moderators, thank you so much to all. The moderators of the interactive conversations are Helen Chan, Vice Chair, Academy 22, Education for All Foundation and lecturer at the University of Hong Kong. Claudia Servanuta, PhD Community Development Manager at Progress Foundation, Romania. Anka Repno, Project Manager with Progress Foundation in Romania. Sarah Loa, Head Librarian, Secondary School in Peru, an international library uh, librarian. And myself, I will be moderating the one about library associations. Let's see how we can do this. We're live. <laughs> live. Libraries are vital to our community recovery and resiliency. COVID-19 rushed in many changes to the way libraries provide services and access to information. But I want us to know and keep in mind that in the middle of the big shift rushed in by the pandemic, librarians, we are the ones we have been waiting for to position libraries as key players at national and global levels to advocate, show our value, and to develop partnerships to strengthen libraries to provide essential services during the pandemic, the aftershocks, and beyond. We have the knowledge, the capability, and the power to, together with IFLA, national and regional library associations such as Reforma, ALA, and those in your countries, together with libraries and librarians, help rebuild a fair and just society. Together, united, we can. During the pandemic, IFLA created COVID-19 and the global library field, a comprehensive website with key resources for libraries in responding to the coronavirus pandemic, which includes state of libraries around the world, guidelines for reopening libraries, actions by associations, national libraries and library partners, communicating with users in different languages and IFLA activities. The IFLA journal is going to dedicate an issue 
to innovations in libraries during COVID-19, the pandemic. And nationally, library associations also created their own resources. For instance, the ALA created an online resource titled COVID-19 Recovery, featuring um, guides and much more resources in four main areas that convey a myriad of subsections. For instance, advocacy and policy, education, data and research, and guidance, content, and protocols. If your library association developed resources, this is a good time to share them with us on the chat. During the pandemic, libraries have been innovating and have creatively <clears throat> served customers in ways only librarians could have done it. We all know it. Librarians are the heroes of this story. Librarians deserve all the recognition for the amazing work during this challenging time. Today, we are going to start our event featuring library services during the pandemic in Brazil. I think we are all very curious to know more about libraries in different regions of the world and how they manage to continue serving the community. Libraries are the center of the community and if the building is not open, how can we do this? We will learn more about innovative services in South America in Brazil. Today, during the talk by Pierre-André Rupert. To have infrastructure, funds, dedicated librarians, building equipment, databases and collections, and to support promotion of reading and literacy, libraries generally need support from the local governments. Uh, through advocacy, libraries secure support and funds. What happens when everyone is home, like during the pandemic? And traditional advocacy, in-person meetings, one-on-one -on -one conversations in person cannot happen. Advocacy cannot stop. We are all together in this and must work together to also develop partnerships to strengthen libraries to provide those essential services to communities deeply affected during the pandemic. Today, we are going to learn more about innovative ways of advocating during our Advocacy in Digital Times section by Shonda Hines. A crucial part of our work, advocating for libraries, seeking support or donations, is to demonstrate the value of libraries. Investors, the government, donors, those who give grants want to know what the return on their investment is. How can we do this? There are different ways to show them that investing in libraries is helping communities. Because doing the opposite, not investing in libraries, will be harming communities that may not have spaces for people to meet, which helps to build social cohesion, promote digital literacy and access to the internet and technological devices, and provide access to e-government, jobs information, business opportunities, and so much more. And today, Jean Tan will share insightful ideas about the value of libraries. And these are all our guest speakers again. After our guest speakers, we will go into breakout rooms. So stay with us. Uh, we have, we're going to have interactive conversations about academic, public, and school libraries, and how we are going to continue serving communities in the aftermath of the pandemic. We also have a breakout room to discuss the topic from the view of library associations. I encourage you to join one of these conversations to know more from colleagues in different regions of the world. After the breakout rooms, we are returning back to this main space and to listen highlights from those conversations. And then the event, this event 
ends for today. But we will return with Together From Home, Brave Librarians. That is on April 14, at the same time, 11 a.m. New York time, and we hope to see you all. And now, let's welcome our first speaker, Pierre-André Rupesh. Hello, uh, all. It's a joy to be here with you to learn and share uh, some experiences. I will try to share a presentation. It's okay? Yes. Okay, so uh, just to give a context to my presentation, I would like to say that I come from the state of Sao Paulo, Brazil, where I am the CEO of SP Leituras, an NGO which manages for the state of Sao Paulo, the Library of Sao Paulo, the Parque Vila Lobos Library, the State Libraries Network, which brings together about 650 municipal public libraries, among some other library and reading programs. In the early years 2000, and faced with the situation of abandonment in a in which a very large part of the then approximately 900 public libraries lived, the State Secretariat of Culture promoted a seminar called International Seminar of Living Libraries, bringing together the state libraries around the idea of sharing experiences and discussing the role of public libraries in the 21st century. At this point, we started talking in, in Brazil about living libraries and what should characterize them. It was from this discussion and given the need to express these ideas in an effective public library project that the Library of Sao Paulo was founded in 2010. Uh, Uh, yeah. uh, built on the rubble of the largest prison in Latin America with about 9,000 prisoners, BSP had become a field of experimentation in library practices for the state libraries network. And since then has exercised this role despite enormous budget difficulties, of course. Public libraries in Brazil, unfortunately, are far from being a priority for governments. Diversity of audiences and services is the characteristic brand of the Sao Paulo Library, serving about 30,000 people each month, including young people, adults and the elderly, babies <clears throat> and their parents, homeless people and students from technical schools and universities, children from the projects and slums in the neighborhood, professionals, people and all kinds of all kinds and with all kinds of projects and needs. With the idea of placing people and communities at its core, the library has become a true cultural square. And then came 2020. Faced with the need to hastily close libraries and still offer services, the first trend in the very first days was to start producing online programs on the fly. The result was very poor. It was to reproduce programs unimportant to our audience. And very quickly, we realized that we should really stop for a while and rethink ourselves. We then started to ask ourselves, after all, what do we really have to do? What is really essential? And the answer, as usually happens in these cases, was obvious. Our heart is people and our job is to relate to people. From then on, three questions reoriented us, very simple questions, but that had to be answered in a very specific way. First, who is our audience? Who are our patrons? But we, we did not want a theoretical or generalist answer. <clears throat> we wanted the list of people the library served, each 
with their own specifics. What is the best way to be in contact with this audience? Here again, it was not worth saying through the internet. And first of all, because in our country, internet access is not universal. And for those who have access, access is often of very poor quality. Knowing who and how to relate to our patrons. The next question was, at this moment, what is the best service that as part of our mission, we can provide to our patrons? From there, we've revisited all of our services. It is important to say that when we started reopening libraries in November last year, and now they are closed again, the same essential questions had to be asked and answered again to understand what services would we should offer in the first place to our patrons. With this in mind, we then restarted to offer our services and some of these experiments <clears throat> were successful and of course, some of them weren't. Let's remember that the pandemic has overtaken Brazil during a prolonged economic crisis that has dragged on since 2015. The progressive closure of the economic activities has accelerated the effects of this crisis. Millions of people in the poverty range started to need food before anything. So the first initiatives of libraries, in particular of communitarian libraries and to which we associate related to this distribution of basic food baskets to people with books, of course, and distribution of masks and alcohol. <clears throat> Among our previous activities, we had a training program for the elderly in the use of smartphones and the internet, a program carried out by the library service teams and which was a great success. Now, more than ever, they needed us. We immediately converted these programs so that they could happen remotely with the help of, with the help of telephones, of WhatsApp, of whatever was at our hand. We also ver were very upset with the huge public of homeless people who frequented the library daily, about 25% of BSP daily's audience, and who suddenly found themselves with nothing. We spent a lot of energy trying to establish links with hostels for homeless people to offer our services remotely. We had to get involved in helping them improve their internet networks so we could have remote meetings between library staff and our audience and patrons offering, first of all, attention, listening and conversation first, and then services, activities and books. One of the successful programs of our librarians, Le Noninho, in English, Reading in the Nest, offers parents and their children from six months to four years old shared reading experiences. The idea is to encourage parents to read to their children and to enjoy with them emotionally positive moments around reading and the cultural heritage of the family and the community. We started offering parents instructions over the internet on how to reproduce these experiences at home. Each Sunday, we launch a new program to parents. We had also a great experience offering reading clubs and we immediately started doing it over the internet with great success, even with young children. In one of those reading clubs, we started to share with children books related to the UN's 2030 SDG agenda together with the Library's Brazilian Federation. And of course, 
we started our digital library, which in Brazil is not obvious since until last year, we had no offer at all of digital books for public libraries in Brazil due to business uh, issues. And <clears throat> we learn a lot of things for sure. The world of remote access, virtual relations and internet actions tends to suggest the image of mass relations. But reality has shown us something else. As the French writer Michel Petit says, actually, it is not libraries that transform people, but libraries can provide the means for people to transform people. Personal contact was always the key. Mary or John from the library talking to Joseph or Helen from the project and so on. It has never been more evident that the library's work takes place on a one-to-one -one basis, that libraries in action are essentially people in relation to people. For us, for us the challenge then was, and still is, how to keep work teams happy, nourished, and focused on the community and on people. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Pierre. This is definitely a different view from other countries, right? Um, and how beautiful when you said that the library held listening sessions, right? First listening to the community on how to serve them if the library itself didn't have internet and provided these first eight items. I would like to open um, the sort of floor now for uh, questions. If someone has questions for Pierre, we can uh, take about one or two. Uh, this is a beautiful contribution, Pierre, very, very inspiring. And this is how it should be, right? Listening to the community to see what they need instead of us trying to guess what they need. Um, let's see if we have some questions for Pierre in Brazil. If not, we're going with Shauna ha Shonda Hines. And, and then um, I think Pierre was there with us. And so if you have questions, please type them on the chat. We'll take them at the end of Shanda together. Shauna, welcome. Hello, everyone. Thank you for having me, Loida, and it's a pleasure to be with you all here. I am uh, talking with you from Washington, D.C. I am part of ALA's Public Policy and Advocacy Office here in Washington. Um, I'm going to share my screen momentarily. Okay. Here we go. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, digital advocacy in a public, a, uh, in a digital advocacy, that's our topic today. And, um, you know, digital advocacy is not so much different than any other advocacy. Uh, the techniques, are pretty much the same wherever you are in the world, um, but we all have to pivot the way we communicate because of COVID. Um, and so libraries have pivoted brilliantly throughout the United States and around the world, you all are all here. Um, and so now it's time to pivot our advocacy strategy um, and it's actually past time, so this is, a good opportunity. Um, first of all, I want to say that when we talk about advocacy or when I talk about it today, I'm coming from a federal perspective, but it applies everywhere to any level of, of um, government or even with the public. But I want to specifically address um, advocacy in terms of sharing your story with 
decision makers. And that could be uh, decision makers, elected decision makers in your community um, at the state or regional level or at the federal or national level. Um, and uh, I suspect the same would be true also internationally with the United Nations and Lloyd, you would have more uh, experience with that. But I'm particularly interested in telling a story to demonstrate the value of your libraries to these influencers. Um, so before I get started, I'll say that everything that I will present in the next few minutes is on ALA's webpage, um, which is ala.org slash ad advocacy. Yeah. Okay. So we have all kinds of resources here, and the main one is oops, getting started and how to find your elected uh, officials to becoming an advocate and taking action. All of it is here on, on this page and some of the resources I'll show you today. So first of all, we have our traditional techniques, mass email campaigns. Um, we've all put in our name and our email address and sent a quick email to members of Congress, and we can still do that. Um, certainly making phone calls, um, as I work in communications, I'm particularly fond of engaging media, um, working with them and writing letters to the editor and op-eds. And so um, that's one I'm fond of. Meeting in person with decision makers and their staff. Um, that is something that we encourage. We've had legislative days um, for uh, 25 years in Washington. We um, encourage that back at home in district. Um, and then inviting people into your library. These are all traditional advocacy techniques that we are encouraging, and particularly um, as we're able to reopen. But until that happens, um, we are focusing our efforts with ALA on digital advocacy now. And so, uh, we're going to talk today about social media um, and these social media platforms provide a, a place where you can share the work that you're doing and you can reinforce your relationships with decision makers. Um, I really appreciated what you said, Pierre-Andre, about uh, relationships and that our work is people to people. Um, and that's just how it is with decision makers. It's person to person. And um, we cannot assume that we are so small that a decision maker doesn't want to hear from us. We want to assume rather that they are there to listen to us, to listen to you as grass tops, not just grassroots, but leaders in your community. Um, so that's the way we are approaching this. And um, research shows, in fact, that members of Congress, uh, approximately 85% of them are active on social media. And so this is a really good way to connect with them. Um, and every member of Congress in the United States, and I'm sure around the world, has their preferred social media platforms. Um, so you need to find out which ones they use. Um, in the United States, many of them are most active on Twitter and then up and coming is Instagram. So in addition to social media, um, a quite, uh, another um, digital advocacy technique is having a virtual meeting um, and even better, a virtual library tour. Um, so here um, under social media, I just wanna show you some resources and then a few examples. Um, so we have on the right here, a social media advocacy toolkit, and it includes best practices for social media. It's just a one pager that you can download from uh, our advocacy website. And um, it includes basics, 
tips for Facebook, tips for Twitter, tips for Instagram. Um, and another resource we have here on the left is live streaming um, and storytelling. And so if you've never used Facebook Live or Instagram, um, this is one page that you can easily download and it takes you right through it. And I'm not familiar with doing this. So if it's useful for me personally, it can work for just about anyone. Um, so uh, some examples of some social media um, recently, this I think was just yesterday. Um, one of the wins that we are particularly excited about um, is that uh, here in the United States, we've just uh, received $200 million for the Institute of Museum and Library Services to distribute to states um, for COVID relief funding for libraries. And um, this particular library in Buffalo was excited and they decided to tweet thanks to their members of Congress. Um, and then as you can see, they use the hashtag library strong Using a hashtag is really important because it'll help you keep track of your work. Um, and then another thing, they, they tagged their member of Congress. They wanted to make sure that he would see that. Um, and so their, his communication staff, when they go through the um, media uh, report every day, uh, then they'll see that he was tagged here. And then um, it's a thank you message rather than a critical message. And, you know, a spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down. Um, and so when you're, whether it's with a member of Congress that is already always supportive or another member of Congress or leader who's not necessarily supportive of libraries, if you're able to say thank you, that will go a long way. Um, Another really interesting technique, we had a good relationship with Representative Andy Levin from Michigan's 9th District. And um, we decided to collaborate with him and have a Twitter chat um, on our Twitter account for the American Library Association. So as you can see from the tweet below here, um, here's one of our, our questions to Rep Levin. Um, and this was from last fall, how would the specific bill that he introduced help Library Strong? And then he responded to us. So if you already have a good relationship on social media with your elected leaders, by all means, invite them to have a presence there. You can have a 15 minute Twitter chat and um, that can go a long way in, um, in improving your relationship. And I'll just say never underestimate the power of your social media platforms. It's so critical. Everyone who pays attention to you is a constituent and is a voter in your district and members of Congress care about this exceedingly. So um, one more is Instagram. This is something we started doing last fall. Um, ALA has a program called Libraries Build Business. And um, we started having an interview every month um, uh, with a Libraries Build Business library leader to talk about their entrepreneurship programs. And this has been excellent. Um, we've invited members of Congress and also part of the business communities to be part of these. And um, again, this is another um, technique you can use and use our resource um, that I showed earlier. Another one, and I just say we are really promoting this. Um, in two weeks is National Library Week in the United States. And so uh, I believe it starts April 4th. And um, we are really encouraging people to have a congressional tour of their library. Um, invite your member of Congress in person <laughs> if you can. Um, there is no better way to tell their, your story than eye to eye, but if you can't, make it a virtual tour. Um, and uh, we have actually a specific example of this um, in Michigan's ninth district. We, I mentioned Representative Levin who did the Twitter chat. Um, 
we also uh, had a congressional tour. I don't know if you can see, this is the congressman here, um, but the library director um, at Clinton Macomb Public Library in the representative's district, he gave a tour and um, you can watch this on our website. Uh, you can see part of it or the full um, tour. And he literally goes through his library and shows the representative talking about the services and telling the stories of the people who benefit from those services. Um, and uh, he includes examples of content that he knows the representative is interested in. For example, um, the representative really likes birding. And so uh, the library director here um, had a to-go bag with a laptop and a uh, Wi-Fi hotspot and um, birding books and uh, so it was an example of the kind of services that we offer. And uh, Pierre-André, you mentioned also that many people do not have access to the internet or to high-speed internet. And we are all experiencing this. This is a story that needs to be told and uh, members of Congress and decision makers won't know about it unless you tell them. Having a virtual tour is the perfect place to do that. And surprise, we have a resource on how to conduct a virtual library tour on our website. Um, and when you have a virtual tour, you can amplify that um, by including part of it or on social media. Um, reuse that, tweet about it um, and put it on Facebook and tag again your member of Congress because that's further um, um, exposure for them, public um, and positive public relations. Um, so um, messaging, I just want to say that before you use social media, make sure you know what you want to happen. If there's a decision being made in your, in your district, um, if there's a funding opportunity, think about what you want and um, to come of that and make sure that your message supports it. And who do you wanna hear the message? Tag them. What is important to them? What will um, best convince them that you are um, worthy? You know, use those examples. Um, and then finally, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll say again, National Library Week is coming up. That's the perfect time. Um, to tell your story. And finally, I'll wrap up here um, because someone's gonna be talking shortly about um, uh, fundraising and telling your story that way. I encourage you when you do social media, engage all members of your um, library community, whether it's in your newsletter, if it's a presentation you give, if you have a board report, and if you're trying to raise money, um, make sure they know about your social media efforts and engage them, have them like your posts and, and support you in this. Um, and that's a way to raise the profile. Uh, finally, just to remind you, this is our Advocacy Getting Started page, uh, ala.org slash advocacy. And um, I am happy to talk with you later. Um, and our Twitter account is at library policy. So here we go. Thank you so much, Anda. Uh, many people were wondering how to continue advocating and these are great resources and toolkits that ALA has developed, totally free, available on the website for the world. So thank you. And I'm so happy that we are using Library Strong. I remember that hashtag from my presidency. So yeah. that's that's still uh, important and it's definitely important to uh, link everything. Now we are going to move to the value of libraries, the return on investment. Welcome, Jin Tan. Hi everyone. Uh, can you wave if you can hear me well? Thank you, Loida. Okay, so first I want to pay a little tribute to Shonda. I can totally identify the spoonful of sugar. And um, I must tell you guys that it's close to midnight. 
and I usually go to bed at 10. Yeah, so Loida, I am doing a huge favor to the international audience from Singapore, lots of love. Uh, but in order to stay up, guys, I, I had to watch a movie and I just finished this movie and I'm going to show that to you. And it's something that I think all Liberians wish they'll get every day. You know, they get this day every day. And it is the Yes Day. Have you guys seen Yes Day, Shonda? You must be so busy, Shonda. Yeah, you're busy. I'm, I've got lots of time. Yeah, so me, lots of time, Yes Day. So uh, this whole presentation is about how to get a Yes Day. And I'm going to show you some examples of how in Singapore we've managed to achieve this Yes Day. Uh, but first, what's the inspiration behind packaging a Yes Day? Uh, so have you guys watched Wonder Vision? If you have, wave your hands. Okay, so uh, most of you don't have lives and don't watch TV. So I shall not do plot spoilers for you. Suffice to say that Wonder Vision takes us back several decades, through the decades as inspiration. And I thought, maybe that's what libraries are about. That's what our package should be about, you know. Uh, looking at what libraries were from decades ago and then repackaging that value. But you know, Wonder Vision, Loida, you know that at the end of the day, they sort of pull the rug from under your feet. And Shonda, you don't really want to do that to congressmen. Well, maybe some congressmen, but not all of them. Yeah, so we thought, okay, so what should we do? Should we go somewhere else for inspiration? Uh, so as I was trying not to fall asleep, I started listening to Dua Lipa. Have you guys heard that? Grammy Award winner? Future Nostalgia, okay, Liberians, you all need to get out a little bit more, okay? So anyway, this is the Grammy winner, and um, I thought this is a great inspiration for libraries. Uh, so Dua Lipa, when she was starting the year, um, and in March 2020, that was at the start of the COVID pandemic, she said, I'm going to do an album, I'm going to release an album that's a happy album. And through her, that was a major risk. Because why would you release a happy album when there's so much panic and sadness in the air? And I thought, that's it. That is a package that we need to sell to our stakeholders. It is the past. That's why it's called Future Nostalgia. Leveraging all the powers of the librarian's past, the library's past, in a version that the politicians, the government will say, oh, I remember that, but then package as future pop. And I thought, yes, that is the way to do the advocacy. So today, guys, I'm going to show you three ideas in three minutes each to getting a yes day in Singapore. And these are real examples. So you might, you might sound a little bit flippant and I might sound a little, you know, uh, drug enabled, but I tell you these are real examples. So I'm going to go through one by one. So the first example is, okay, just look at this. These are the people who are benefiting from the pandemic, okay? So they're getting so rich from pandemic and they are selling the ideas of a platform. But hello, we were a platform before this idea of the platform service was, invite, was invented by Silicon Valley. So let's look at some of the ideas that they have because as the best librarians, we can learn a little something, something more competitors. So look at Amazon, uh, we looked at the idea of the virtual cycle. Amazon does it to lower their costs. So they package the whole idea of increasing the volume of sales getting more people online, and as a result, lowering the prices, and then more settlers and more buyers will come in. Uh, and Netflix has this whole idea of recommendations and using that to stream content and pulling more and more um, services together and content. So it becomes like this juggernaut of content you, that you just can't miss. In fact, I just watched yesterday on Netflix. So what can we learn from this? So my first pitch, and this is what I did, and this is exactly what I said. Shonda, you just turned off. I hope you're still listening because I love the spoonful of sugar. So I went to the head of civil service and the Ministry of Finance, which is the, the body that actually funds you. And I said, you know, Netflix and Amazon uh, and what they do. And you know what we can do? We can be like them. We can be the, the original and the new elevated platform to reach everybody. And you know what the difference is between libraries and the rest of these platforms? There are no gains. There are no tricks because librarians are the most honest people in the world. Well, other than monks and nuns, but other than that, you know, librarians are pure. So people trust our platform, unlike all of these retail platforms. So what can we do with it? So we decided to take the idea of Amazon, turn it on its head and create a library Netflix. So using the whole idea of cycle of agglomeration, which is what Amazon is about, libraries around the world, you guys have a massive base already. And it is very, very hard for a public good competitor to disrupt you. And retail competitors, 
I don't think you're going to make money out of this. No one's coming in. So if you can use this whole concept of many users, bring more partners in, having more content, more users, more partners, I think you get the picture. It's the idea of agglomeration. So we're using this concept to preach to the government. And I have to say that the head of civil service in Singapore was very attracted to the idea and said, yes, I buy that. And it is a great platform for us to reach out to the entire citizenry. Uh, and we said, that's not all, guys. I'm sorry about this. But libraries bet for all teams. Huh, Loida? So they bet for all teams. Uh, so because we bet for all teams, we do both physical and digital. Not every company has that. But libraries are the original omni-channeler. Yeah, so as you can see from the very heavy text there, it's physical, it's digital, it's online, it's offline. We have that basis. Can we build that further? I'll just share one idea that has got um, a lot of politicians in Singapore very excited. And we sort of riff off, you guys can recognize this, it's the Intel sign. Yeah, so we stole it a little bit and say, what if it's an NLB sign, NLB inside, so Intel inside. Can we be even more ubiquitous that we are, but not always through your iPad or through your iPhone? Can we create the idea of nano nodes? So these nodes come in different sizes and they can be embedded everywhere, not to watch you, but for you to access information wherever you are. So it could be on the painting, it could be on the park bench, it could be even an eye-catching tree in the middle of Christmas. So we are thinking of the idea of uh, an all-inclusive, all-sheltering Christmas tree. And if you pitch this to one of the ministries, they got very excited. And it will be filled with books and the lower end of the branches that everybody can reach will be a digital book. And the book will be able to access all the ideas uh, from celebrities, from thinkers in Singapore, from influencers, on what it means to be inclusive in the age of COVID. Yeah, so people got very excited by, by that. It's not just coming up with a pamphlet or press release. It is something physical you can take a photo of and yet at the same time access all of these important messages. Okay, second idea. So second idea, ah, okay, so librarians read books, right? So I just borrowed this off Overdrive and I'm close to finishing it. It's a really tragic story. And in this story, our dear friend Adam Newman, the founder of WeWork said that um, he wants to invent the physical social network. And again, guys, hello, we have invented that when dinosaurs roamed the earth. Yeah, so what are you talking about? So I said, okay, so what are we going to do with all this power that we have, the physical social network? Uh, everyone talks about polarization. Everyone talks about things that uh, pull people apart. What if we let people have a first try, first touch, first test, first read, first encounters at the library to encounter something that they may not be familiar with or may not be comfortable with? So this encounters something, somebody, uh, we try to apply it to one of the major issues that, that has arisen from COVID, shockingly, is climate change, sustainability, blue skies for once. So how do we take, take advantage of this opportunity? So guys, we did this pitch to this ministry that has this massive fund on supporting sustainability. Said, okay, this is what we're going to do. We are going to help people get out of their echo chambers. Yeah, because when you're in an echo chamber, you think the world is all about you. Yeah, so we thought, library is a common space. Can we come together, use the power of the platforms and networks of platforms to help users to connect to a theme that they may not think is their business? Uh, how do we do that? So there are all these little things that we're doing. There's a whole smorgasbord thing that you can see over here. But what I really want to show you is this. Okay, I know there's no audience interaction here and I can't give anyone the prize, but uh, do you know what this is? Okay, so this is the Chanel show from fall 2014. Yeah, and way back when Carl Lagerfeld was still alive. Uh, so you did this massive shopping center and every piece in it was actually a Chanel inspired item. So you had Chanel chainsaws, you know, with the Chanel label. Uh, I thought that's quite interesting. So we pitched this idea of sustainability because there's no better way for people to access the concept of sustainability than food and shopping. So we pitched the Ministry of Sustainability in Singapore. I can't remember the real name, Loida. So I just invented that, but it's a ministry or something. Yeah, that takes care of climate change and green. And we said, let us let everybody have a sense of what it is. So every product in this new shopping center, library store they are talking about uh, has a story behind it. They are either imagined or they exist 
They are by school kids, they're by green entrepreneurs, they're also by innovators. And every piece has a lead to a virtual dimension, uh, whether it's a video, whether it's an AR, or somebody telling you about sustainability. So we thought, uh, and now the ministry is so excited. So you guys, they're the ones giving the funds, right? The ones giving the funds. But they are so excited that they want to work with us to get the funds. Yeah, yeah, this there's a little bit of corruption going on, Shonda, do you think? Yeah. But but uh, I like this sort of corruption because, you know, it's people, funders working with us to get their funds because they get, they're so excited with the whole idea. Okay, idea number three. Whew. Okay, so idea number three is about going national. It's elevating the whole thing to the next level. Um, this particular one, uh, we've managed to clear this with two ministries, two ministers, uh, actually four ministers, and we're about to go to the cabinet uh, I don't know what the equivalent of that is in the United States, uh, the cabinet, all the secretaries, secretaries of state agriculture, all in one room, the cabinet. Uh, so it's going to go to the cabinet next week on, uh, actually it's one week from today. And we are pitching for this national project. The libraries have a role uh, when it comes to taking national action. Uh, so we are quite hopeful because it's really cleared many, many hurdles to get there. But how do we do the pitch? Let me show you. Okay, so in Singapore, we have created something called uh, Singapore Together Alliances for Action. So throughout the community, there are action networks. So it's government, it's communities, organizations, and they are all experimenting with things to provide, uh, to imagine a post-COVID future in Singapore. Uh, all the issues, all the issues that have arisen because of COVID-19, how are we going to do that? How are we going to build this different world? Yeah, so for instance, one of them is the Green Plan. So when COVID is trying to tell us something, what does the library do? So this is what we plan to do. See, so this is a mashup. A library becomes a theater of ideas. Haven't we been a theater of ideas always? So riffing from a little bit of inception, a little bit of Leonardo da Vinci's engineering diagrams, and just a pinch of Harry Potter's uh, stage play, Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. So we pulled together this idea that Libraries can bring ideas to life as an explosive exposition. Guys, I'm not going to tell you everything. I'm going to keep this a secret because I hope you guys can all come to Singapore at some point to see this if I succeed. This is going to be next year and on next year when it happens. Uh, so the whole idea is to take all of these ideas from different parts of society and then for librarians and researchers to pull this together into a world that you can see in the post-COVID uh, Singapore. And not just that, because not everyone is digital. So we thought, uh, could we also create notes in all libraries? So in every library, we are creating a walk-in experience for someone to experience what it's like to work, uh, to live, and to, to care in the future. So we're actually building installations with architects within the library so you can actually feel the experience. And with that, um, we created what I would call the, well, this really is it. This is it. This idea is a futuristic digital library. Uh, so we are creating this digital library where every book is an idea for a better world. So every book will be an idea that has come from someone. We'll get writers, authors, illustrators to build that book. And then we'll have filmmakers to create videos that will emerge from the book. So every book here will lead to a better world. So this is our proposal for books to change the world. So this together is a concept that's going to go up to the... Uh, Shonda, the secretaries of Singapore, doesn't sound right, but that's, that, I, I believe that's the term. Uh, so it's going to be debated in cabinet. So wish me luck that we'll get the funding because then I feel that's a way to push the agenda for the value of libraries. Okay, so I've come to the end and I just want to say that there's no better time in the face of COVID and everything the library has done for generations to now use what they've done, the legacy to say, I want a yes day, but how do we work the people that we need something from? <sighs> In the words of Dua Lipa, you guys have got to download this, okay? Future Nostalgia, go listen to it, you will love it. Uh, and it's about levitating. It's about elevating everything that we have. But more importantly, to round back to Shonda, it's about a spoonful of sugar, it's about advocacy with a dash of future pop. Thank you, Loida. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much, Jean. You always bring such insightful takes on things. 
I think we are going to be thinking about these groundbreaking ideas for a while, how to show the value of library, but in a total different way that we have uh, traditionally done. So thank you so much, Jean. Uh, you stay in way your, your bedtime until uh, after uh, midnight in Singapore is very much appreciated. We'll find, I'll find a way of, of doing something for you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, we have some minutes now to take questions. There was a question here for Pierre and, and we are going to have to you know, go back to his presentation. And it was about how the listening sessions, they, how the listening took place how it was advertised to the public, um, keeping in mind that there was no internet. Well, thank you for the question. Uh, it was at first in a very, very, very simple way. It was just, uh, as I told you, we, we were uh, listing our patrons and trying to, to uh, locate the way to communicate with them, each, uh, each one, one-to-one, -one, in one-to-one -one basis, first of all. So first of all, we tried through WhatsApp and through uh, <clears throat> telephone to get in touch with those people. And then we uh, tried in an institutional basis. So trying to get in touch through the, the hostels of, of, uh, of uh, homeless people, for instance, and then on. And then, yes, in social media and through the internet. But first, we, we, we tried it <clears throat> uh, through, through telephone and through uh, WhatsApp. Definitely different ways and the person-to-person -person contact, very, very important to succeed. Um, thank you, Pierre. Uh, we have some time for questions for Shonda or Jean. Jean's still holding up there. <laughs> uh, and so this is a good time. Please uh, take advantage of this amazing opportunity. I, I want to say that I'm incredibly uh, grateful to all for sharing so much information. Um, and if there is no questions um, now, okay, I'm reading the comments. Everybody is very happy with uh, the information share. Everybody is just blown away by the idea. So that's wonderful. I'm glad about that. Uh, and so if there's no questions, I don't see them. We're going to go to the breakout rooms. And here you will select um, breakout rooms on academic libraries, public libraries, school libraries, and library association. Um, and so um, Edwin, if you are there, please let us know how are we going to work this out. Great, I'm setting that okay. up. Uh, I'm setting them up right now. And uh, basically people will just choose the room that they want to join. Yes, and how they're going to know academic and public. They're going yes, to I'm uh, setting up the names right now for them. Wonderful. This is live. We are back. Oh my gosh, that time. We were thinking when we were planning this, 20 minutes is so long and that time flew. But uh, we are going straight to the uh, moderators to listen about the highlights. And um, this, this piece will be in the recording, so it's important for us to do that. So let's start with the academic libraries. Uh, Claudia. Okay, just give me a second. Yes. Because I think we were, uh, we were just wrapping up uh, before, we, uh, before we got back in. Uh, so I will, um, let me, just one second, sorry. So we did, uh, we used, um, we were a few um, people in the room with uh, uh, an overall experience of over a hundred years in academic libraries. Um, 
uh, <laughs> almost 100, but I'm, I'm sure, you know, with our student, student experiences, we went over 100. And we used uh, uh, Trusider, uh, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but it's a way, great tool to, to uh, connect I uh, ideas. And uh, it was a little bit slow in, in writing and uh, uh, putting the ideas up, but you see, you know, uh, with the question, what uh, is an important area for academic library in the next year? Uh, the health and safety and the, um, uh, the part with quarantine items and the disaster management were the first one to come up, which is normal. Uh, and then uh, the um, working on uh, library staff uh, with their, uh, uh, the skills to meet the needs for the pandemic challenges uh was uh, was added afterwards as we were talking about the skills of the of the staff and the fact that the digital resources will remain a priority for the um, um for the academic libraries even after the pandemic so that's a clear direction that um Nick needs to be uh, uh put there and uh invested in because it's part of the of what the future will bring and then uh, going to the um, um, area of, for library professionals in the next uh, few years, and this is where we got cut off because it was an interesting conversation about the importance of soft skills of the people working in, in, um, um, in libraries. And th th it's an interesting conversation because, you know, we would have thought that we have though, that those skills, right? Because we're librarians. But then the challenge of the pandemic was to show us that these skills needs to be really, really uh, practiced over and over again. And also practiced uh, on the variety of platforms really be able to connect with skill was the top in the list and then also thinking about personal personalized services and uh, how to approach uh, people uh, this was basically uh, the the list and we have a few more and i will definitely share this uh, with uh, with the group afterwards thank you so much claudia this is very revealing uh, and please do send it to me we're going to try to find a way to also post it on the website and now we go to public libraries with Anka. And a big thank you to, to the participants. It's my turn again. It's yes. It's we are moving so so fast. It's like uh, it's like um, thunder. <laughs> so uh, let me just share my screen to and let me uh, take the um, opportunity to actually thank the people that were in the room because we were cut in the middle of the thank you <laughs> that I was giving. So thank you so much for contributing. Um, Yes, and we, we had a very vivid uh, conversation about, about uh, the two um, uh, questions that uh, we had. And um, we tried to list, you know, and not so much discuss because it's, it, was, uh, it, it was so uh, uh, fast. <laughs> so, um, but for sure, uh, it, um, there were questions about how to advocate and a um, few of the people in the room were um, and me too also we were we uh, expressed our concerns with um, how um, the crisis the financial crisis will hit libraries that are already vulnerable but from the financial point of view and uh, advocacy seems to be one of the um, issues that is going to be even more important than usual when it comes to resources so money, advocacy, how to show the importance of the libraries for the communities, how to gather and uh, uh, show the support uh, for the community, and how to tell the story of, of, um, of the libraries in a way that's more um, accessible and easy to understand for, for, for the people that are influential and uh, make decisions. Um, also, um, how to integrate technologies and teaching to take uh, um, to teach to patrons and um, how to uh, and um, improved ways of marketing and resources and um, one of the things that got a lot of votes was the mental health support for the public how to integrate this with with uh, with our uh, usual care of, of customers 
and uh, patents. And um, as it comes to the library professionals um, from public libraries, um, it um, again, it um, it was a very vivid discussion, and I'm sure that it would would have been even more productive if we had more time. So a uh, more diverse representation in library administrators uh, and other administration and uh, a more in, um, involvement of, of uh, patterns in making decisions and how to prepare for that because not always uh, librarians are ready or uh, know how to um, handle this, you know, co-creation and, and uh, deciding uh, together with, with uh, uh, their uh, constituents. Um, we need to work with health and social uh, services and uh, psych psychologists and training in general. It it I, it seems that everybody is on the same page that we need to learn and learn and learn again and again and again. Whether this is um, uh, by uh, means of of LIS schools or getting the training or getting the training in continuous training in uh, outside system. Uh, um, methods. And I would say that this covers more or less the uh, discussions. And my only, um, you know, uh, feeling with, with this session is that I think that we could do this kind of discussions like once a month for two hours easily. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yes, we were we should. also in the library associations in one question, mostly. Uh, thank you so much, Anka. And now we go to school libraries with Sarah Loa and Helen Chan. Yes, um, so thank you very much uh, to organize such a exciting and meaningful event today. Um, we have very few people in our group, but we, uh, we got uh, a lot of interesting interesting points from everyone uh, in, in our discussion. Now, um, we all agree that technology um, uh, uh, have a great impact um, in um, uh, this uh, AI era, I would say. Um, no, uh, 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 um, uh, only about, uh, you know, gender speaking, we, we, we can say it's digital era. However, because of the technology, I, I think uh, I, uh, we can divide uh, our discussion to uh, four main items. The first one is the space design. So um, we no longer just uh, uh, based on our uh, um, uh, our physical libraries to serve our users, but also we will think about um, the virtual libraries. So our collections, our resources, our activities and programs uh, thinking about how to move online, okay? And then um, another thing is about the library programs. So um, uh, when uh, when we offer the library programs to our students, uh, we no longer just think about how to use the books, the physical books, but we will also think about how to use the e-resources right now. So enable them to access uh, different uh, online sources. So, and the third thing uh, uh, about collections. And so we have the collections in a hybrid format. Um, um, uh, we are lucky uh, uh, in uh, different uh, countries and areas. Um, the government will have uh, great support or funding to, um, you know, if, to different schools. Um, so to enable them to make the changes happened. And the fourth items is about the library services. So for the library services beforehand, we will focus on the students, but now because of the changes and we need to enable the students to um, you know, handle the changes. So we will, uh, to be a teacher librarian of a school nowadays, we will uh, uh, more maybe have more our time and efforts on the professional development of our teachers to enable them to also uh, use the, the resources uh, we offer uh, in libraries, no matter it's online or uh, in the physical libraries across the curriculum in the teachings and learning and of the students. And also um, um, we will think more about how to enable uh, the parents to support their uh, students learning at home too. Uh, how to use the library services at home, um, especially in Hong Kong, uh, we, um, they do not um, actually, not all the students can go back to uh, schools nowadays. So even at home, we do not want them to stop learning. And then to be a teacher librarian, we can enable 
the students to learn better at home uh, uh, across the curriculum if we can have a good collaboration with different subject teachers. And to do, to, to do this, we also need to pay more attention to the needs of students with different abilities. So um, especially those with, uh, uh, with special educational needs. So that's um, the recap of our discussions. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else that uh, the leaders of the group would like to add? Well, we have come to the end of this event and I would like to thank the speakers and the moderators of the group. And yes, we can have uh, very long discussions and conversations about these topics. Uh, and I would like to invite you all to join us on April 14 at 11 New York time uh, for our second event. And that one is uh, Together From Home, Strong Librarians. So thank you so much. The recording will be available soon. We're going to share it with the hashtag and uh, a summary of the breakout rooms.